Well, welcome to Alpha Wolf Trading. Do you know that there's over 12,000 stocks or companies that trade on the OTC? Between the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, you have over 7,000 companies. But us as retail investors, we wouldn't know that unless we were researching. Because why? Wall Street focuses on the elite, the big companies. And where the retail investor has their advantage is in small and micro cap stocks. Why? Because you have the opportunity to speak directly with leadership. That is what this is all about here at Alpha Wolf Trading. We're trying to find the hidden gems and we interview the executive teams of companies that we think meet the parameters to be those hidden gems. I also want to make sure you understand that this is not a paid for promotion. I collect no compensation for the interviews I do here. These companies that I interview have been identified as potential opportunities for me and the members of Alpha Wolf Trading to receive a higher than average return on our investment. These companies I have identified either because of a technical setup on a chart, a fundamental change within the organization, new management team, new products, all kinds of different things that actually lead me here. But what do I think is the most important? Leadership. And that is why I do these interviews. I want to understand what drives the person that is leading the charge. I want to feel their passion. I want to understand their vision and the strategy that they're going to use to achieve success. That is what these interviews are for. I want to understand the share structure and the cap table, the size of the TAM, the total addressable market. This is the opportunity to learn all of those things. So sit back and enjoy. And if you learn anything from today's interview, do us a favor. Subscribe to the Alpha Wolf Trading YouTube channel. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. I am not a financial advisor. I recommend highly that before buying any security, you speak to a financial advisor and do your own due diligence. Hey everybody, Tim from Alpha Wolf Trading coming at you with a follow-up. It's been a long time since uh, Brian and I had the opportunity to sit down and talk, but I haven't stopped following the story, and I, I think it's one of the more exciting stories out there that is unrecognized. Um, and I think Brian Williamson, uh, CEO of Jericho Energy Ventures, has done a phenomenal job of transitioning this company to a what now, as I would say, is a pretty pretty substantial move for the company. Brian, first of all, <laughs> thanks for coming in to give us an update, man. It's good to see you. Good to see you, Tim. Thanks for having us. All right. So you, you many years ago, when I, not many years ago, a couple of years, two, three years ago, maybe it was when we met. Um, it was during a period where everyone and their brother hated oil companies. Um, and <laughs> you were at a, a investor conference and kind of felt like a leper because nobody wanted to talk to you. And that's when you and I talked. But and you had an initiative then to start a hydrogen company. Um, you had some, some acquisitions that were really interesting. Fast forward to today, where are we, Brian? So since we talked, Tim, we have continued to utilize the cash flow that our oil and gas assets have generated to continue to prosecute and build our hydrogen portfolio. Um, the focus has been to not be a technology company, but to be a solution company because people don't invest in technology, they invest in solutions. And so for us, objectively speaking, we wanted to position Jericho so that we had a hydrogen, a hydrogen focused solution. And we have spent the better part of the last 18 months focused on bringing a, a commercial industrial industry focused hydrogen solution. Uh, at the same time, We've continued to harvest the cash flows from our oil and gas assets to make that happen. So it's afforded us a fairly unique situation where we have been building what we think is an outstanding hydrogen portfolio. 
Um, and I guess from our perspective, we feel like the message is getting a bit confusing because we have this burgeoning, growing, exciting hydrogen business. Um, and we want you know, the market to understand it and have the opportunity to invest in it on its own. Um, and at the same time, there's quite a few folks out there that really are traditionalists and classic oil and gas folks that really just want an oil and gas investment. And so for us, we recognize that. And we recognize that you know, the oil and gas asset could be a dividend-oriented investment so that that cash flow can go back to the shareholders now, right? But that same value that it would be going back to shareholders has been tremendously valuable for them. And we hope they see that and realize that as we look to hopefully separate out our hydrogen business into its own organization. Okay. So if you do that, as you do this separation of the two companies, if they're two separate and distinct companies, the Jericho still own a good portion of the hydrogen. How's that work? So we don't have a we we don't have anything definitive, Tim. But our objective is to go and figure out how we put these two companies in the best position to succeed, so that the hydrogen business will be a standalone business, right? So once we figure out structurally what makes the most sense, what we will end up with is a scenario where anybody that is a shareholder of a given date, once there is, assuming there's a transaction and assuming that it gets announced because it'll have to be announced, then anybody who's a shareholder of that date would get a share in both companies. They'd have their existing share in Jericho, and then eventually, if there's a transaction, they'll have a share in Hydrogen Co. if we find a good landing spot. Um, you know, So we are actively looking at what is the best place, path, and opportunity to put that Hydrogen company on solid footing so that it runs as quickly as it has and it flourishes as an independent company. Um, and we think we have every reason to believe it will. Um, and we think the market will like it a lot as a standalone company um, doing what it does, you know, developing a green molecule, using a green molecule to facilitate the energy transition. Okay. So you've got, you've got some shareholders that, that some significant shareholders like Ed Breen that, that work for, uh, you know, run the pot and um, they're pretty good at, he's really good at, I think Tyco, uh, he's really good at, at taking big companies and and breaking them up into really efficient smaller companies, right? Yeah, Ed, Ed, Ed is obviously the, the 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 best of the best when it comes to these types of um, things, and he's done an amazing job over you know his career of harvesting value for his shareholders. And so, for me, it's an amazing opportunity to leverage just you know, a, a fantastic individual, but a, a brilliant mind on what makes sense. And, you know, he was there, he's been with us, you know, since the beginning. And so, you know, we always have had access to, you know, that wisdom. And, you know, as we sat and talked about it more, you know, his comment was, look, the market likes simple and our story is complicated, right? The market will trade you down to your lowest, what they view as the lowest value asset. And, for good or for bad, oil and gas remains out of favor. So while we think of the energy transition as an opportunity for just un, un, untethered growth, we also recognize that we are listed as an oil and gas company. And so to Ed's point, the market will treat us like an oil and gas company. Um, and so we really need to find a path that creates two simple stories. And that's what we want to get to. One where it's about the growth opportunity of green hydrogen in the energy transition, and the other about cash flow positive oil and gas assets in world class locations. Right. So I think it's really, really, really. I mean, look, you couldn't have gotten here without the oil and gas, right? I mean, Correct. that's the facts. I mean, that is what made it so that you could, you know, grow the whole energy platform. Hydrogen. Absolutely, Tim, and 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 I think it's even broader than that. So. Our, our oil and gas experience, our oil and gas knowledge um, transitions really well, right? So when you think about the energy transition, you know, I said earlier, we have to deliver a solution. What do people want? They want a solution, right? We're not bringing a tech and being in energy, we understand how it's made, stored, transported, and delivered to the customer. So you understand what it is the customer wants um, at the end of the day from that energy molecule. And so for us, it's taking those underpinnings, 
and applying them to how we think about the energy transition. And so we've done that. And, you know, we've also had the opportunity because of our cash flowing oil and gas assets to not have to keep going to the market, keep going to the market and our shareholders and raising fund after fund after fund, which has proven to be the the, the challenge for most of the energy transition companies, because these things take longer than anybody thinks. Um, they go further than people realize, and it's tougher than anyone realizes, right? You know, we hope that one day people wake up and see that, see Jericho, you know, the hydrogen company and say, wow, look at that. It's an overnight success that they built over the last 10 years, <laughs> right? It's a billion dollar company that nobody heard of and, you know, it showed up overnight, but the reality is it took us 10 years to build it. Right, right. Another one of those overnight 10 year successes. Right, that's right. <laughs> but now you have the opportunity to talk to all of the institutional investors, all of the big funds out there who focus on the energy transition, right? So we get none of that capital. We also get no passive investors. And I get it that we're small, so we got to grow to get there. But all the passive capital in the marketplace that goes into the energy transition never makes it to Jericho because we're an oil and gas company when it comes to our actual listing status. And that makes, that makes sense. Right. Um, but, but I can tell you what's interesting to me is we're still building gas stations today. I don't know if you're aware of this. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, there's a mispricing in the market at the end of the day, you know, the market has decided that oil and gas is invaluable. It's not my read, it's the market's read. When you look at how capital is flowing, you know, very little capital, if any, flows into oil and gas in any place other than a couple of big names, right? right. So when you get beyond the Permian Basin and a handful of names, there's really a whole other oil and gas world. And the market sort of sits there and says, well, there's the Permian and these handful of names, and then there's everyone else. Um, well, everyone else has gotten skinnier, has gotten leaner, has gotten hungrier, and is doing more with less. And there's a lot of good things going on in the oil and gas space that, you know, either the stories aren't getting told right or the market just doesn't want to hear about oil and gas. But the tech is amazing. I mean, if you think about it, we deliver natural gas around the United States at sub $2 an MCF. And that's how good the tech is. That's how good the pipeline system is. I mean, so to me, Amazing developments in the oil and gas space, just not the tune or the music that people are listening to right now. Right. And, and, and who knows if that will ever change? I, I don't know. Um, but you got some help with, in the hydrogen area, too, right? We didn't, I don't know if we met after the change in, in uh, hydrogen, but there was a pretty big change for you guys, right? Yeah. So we have really worked hard to build a deep science bench. Um, and then we add it, what I think is a world-class commercial chief commercial officer to the team. So when we went into the hydrogen arena, we partnered with Capella Partners. Um, Capella Partners is a material science firm led by Romy Kadra and jo Jordan Urbach. Um, they could be the two of the smartest individuals I've ever met in my life in terms of science. They're the fastest studies I've ever met. And their expertise and knowledge has afforded us a really good pathway to digesting what are techs that have the ability to be commercially ready um, and things that are really just going to be lab heroes. Um, and then we added, you know, we, when we came into the hydrogen space, we added one of our keys to the deal was adding Janet Reiser, who is a chemical engineer that has been in that world for quite some time. So Janet understands what it takes to bring technology to the commercial marketplace. Um, she has world-class experience and she's been awesome at leading our hydrogen boiler company. Um, and most recently, you know, about 18 months ago, we felt like it was time to add a chief commercial officer, somebody who can bring us to the market. And, you know, we added Dean Morton and what makes Dean so special is he understands the big companies having worked at GE, Alstom, and, and, and Anderson, but he also understands how to be an entrepreneur, having built and sold two startups. So, you know, as a small company, that is really important to understand, you know, both worlds, because you want to be a, you want to, you want to think like a big company, talk like a big company, but be scrappy like a startup, right? And have people who can do multiple things and not are afraid to, 
you know, make their own copies and take the trash out. And I think that our team is an amazing blend of both, right? So we have, you know, the thinking that comes with big organizations and the technical depth that comes with those. Um, but we also have the, 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 the functional sort of quickness that comes with being a startup. Um, you know, so love the team we built, sort of been adding to it and continue to look to add to it, um, you know, and are excited about seeing this team find a place where they can grow and we can grow as a standalone hydrogen business. You know, and our hope, Tim, once we split, if, if we can find the right place to split it off, is that it presents an opportunity for the oil and gas assets to become a platform where we can roll up, we can aggregate up lots of other small oil and gas operators just like us so that there's an economies of scale. There's a dividend coming out each quarter. There's no reason the world should be full of 1,300 small oil and gas companies. Yeah, that that actually sounds like a uh, right for for roll up, right? I mean, that- it does. It does. There's some structural things that have to be solved in the industry, but you know, we think it's a it's the way we want to see the platform evolve, right? Because at the end of the day, we have a platform that has great shareholders. You know, it's not a shell with you know sketchy investors or a story or skeleton. Uh, you know, we know the shareholders. They've been with us for a long time. Same ones that'd be with the hydrogen company. Has NOLs, has really just sort of an opportunity to, to, to be the, the creme de la creme from an aggregation standpoint. Yeah, yeah I love it. I, I love the story. I mean, um, let's, let's talk real quickly about the, the actual technology of the hydrogen company, the boilers, right? Mm-hmm. So where are, where are we now? When. So <laughs> boilers, you know, so we, 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 so a couple of things that have happened in the boiler company, in the boiler industry, um, and we'll add one other piece to what we're doing so that um, you have the full, full coverage. So from a boiler perspective, what we came to realize is, is that with Dean and I out there talking to folks in the market, what we realized is, is that the folks who are responsible for the operations of Pepsi and Coke and Jack Daniels and all these food and pharmaceutical companies, all these big companies around the world, as much as they love what we're doing, their operating folks were really uncomfortable with buying a boiler from, from, from hydrogen technologies because they never heard of us. So we didn't think it was a big stretch, but we understood their concern because their jobs were on the line. So we went and found um, an amazing partner in Superior Boiler. Right, Superior Boiler is a 125-year-old company. They've been making boilers forever. Right? So now when we go to market, we are actually just embedding our technology inside a Superior um, Boiler. And so it's the perfect marriage right? because now people get the, the support, the robustness, the longevity, and the experience of Superior Boiler with our technology managed inside of that. And so you get the best of both worlds. And so now... You know, more times than not, Dean will show up at a customer or we'll meet with a customer or a distributor now, and the customers will have superior boilers already. So that has been, has been eye-opening from our perspective um, in terms of how the customers have reacted. It's a world of difference. So super, super excited. I mean, we just did a conference um, where we did a presentation, and, you know, we're out in San Francisco with the superior boiler folks, and can't, can't tell you the changeover from people being skeptical to people being wanting to know what sizes we offer. When could they get one? Where will we get them the hydrogen? Right. So it's just a whole different conversation. All of the other things have gone now, and it's just about when, where, and how do we get this installed. That's exciting, right? I saw that announcement with, with the Superior. I mean, and I thought that was brilliant. I mean, you know, you're not a, you're not a boiler company. That's not what you do. No. You're a hydrogen and, company. And, right. So why not partner with the best? Right. Right. So for us, that's the perfect fit. They're the best boiler company in the United States or in North America, I should say. And for us, it's the perfect partner. And their team is outstanding. Um, they have been super supportive from, from Doug to Matt to Mokhtar. They're world class in every sense of the way. How excited are they? So I'm going to ask you for, you know, Ed Breen and, and Superior, how, how are they excited about the hydrogen portion of the company? You know, so Ed, Ed has an, a, a, an interesting viewpoint, right? So he is the CEO and chairman of uh, 
Fortune 100 company. I mean, one of the largest chemical companies in the world. So he sees the world moving towards a cleaner um, ecosystem. He sees it almost, you know, almost quarterly in his calls where people are looking at what are you doing to, to, to reduce your emissions? How are you going to manage to the SEC, you know, um, reporting standards? And it's real because you have to realize something that the folks asking these questions are 30 something year olds who are the analysts now and they look at it and it's an issue for their future and they want to understand how the corporate America is thinking about it. And, you know, Ed's a thoughtful guy and he sees it and his translation to me is it's coming. We may be early, but it's coming and don't give up yet. It's coming. Um, you know, people are moving because we're being pushed in that direction. Cause think about this, Tim, every single time somebody replaces one of their boilers, they're making a 25 year decision. So there's nobody that is going to make that decision that can't look out there and say in 2045, is anybody going to care about the environment? <laughs> they probably have to rip that boiler out if they put in one that runs on natural gas in the next five to 10 years because the laws are going that way. Washington State, Texas, not te Washington State, California, Oregon, New York, done. Fossil fuel equipment based, um, uh, fo fossil fuel fueled equipment is getting written out of the legislation. Um, and, you know, no, it doesn't happen overnight, but in certain cases, it's all going to be you know, part of the equation of how you go forward as a company strategically. And we think we're perfectly positioned. And so one of the things that we are working on is how do we get them hydrogen, right? Our boiler needs hydrogen. Where do we get the hydrogen? How do we get that hydrogen? And so, you know, we're hoping to have a, you know, hopefully a little summer surprise on that um, for folks um, that we've been sort of cultivating and working on for about the last 18 months. But we want to bring them that hydrogen too, Tim. I would say that you must feel pretty good about where you are at with that summer surprise or this whole conversation wouldn't even be happening. We think there's a lot of good things coming for our hydrogen <laughs> business and our overall company. And so we're kind of, you know, we're, we're pushing, we're pushing hard to find the right path, the right place to separate the assets. And look, there's no gun to our head. We don't have to do it. At the end of the day, if what, if what we find doesn't make sense, then we don't do it for now. Um, we go back to our same blocking and tackling and focus on selling hydrogen, selling our boilers, building oil and gas portfolio, building a world-class oil and gas portfolio. So for me, I want to do it, and I'm going to make, work real hard to make it happen, but it also has to fit. So, you know, it can't be something we force, but we're going to try like hell to make it happen, Tim. It sure, it sure is hell. Everything you said makes sense, right? I mean, you're not getting the credit for the hydrogen play, and you can't get, you can't get investors that are moving towards ESG and all that to play with an oil and gas company. It's just not going to happen, right? No. So you have to do something. <laughs> we right? do. And, you know, the ESG folks out there are the people that are sort of energy transition centric. You know, they always look and look and they, you know, we have great conversation and then they go look us up and do their diligence. And say, oh, you guys are an oil and gas company. You didn't say you had oil and gas assets. Well, we didn't talk about that. That wasn't the focus of the conversation. But their mandate is secular. They don't have hydrocarbons as part of it. It's not included in their mandate. So it's a full stop on those discussions and no conversation. And, in, you know, the reverse is true, too. Anybody out there that's looking for an oil and gas investment, you have to look really hard to know we're an oil and gas company. Um, we don't have much on that anymore. Yes, it's on our website, but you've got to go search and find it. And the reality is we want to capture those people, too. Right. There's, there's oil and gas investors out there that, you know, as you said, we're not getting rid of our gas stations. We're going to be pumping oil till long after we're around. But I want the opportunity for them to find us, too. Right. And, and the thing is, I guess, the oil and gas company, like you said, if, you, if they, you make these two separate companies, now hydrogen can stand on its own. Now the oil and gas has got all this cash that it's throwing off. That cash has got to go to something. And... Right. Dividends yeah. or acquisitions or, you yeah. know, it, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, those that that whole model makes tremendous sense. Right. Yeah. I mean, the one thing I would say to people, I don't know that they know it or see it, but inflation is real when it comes to oil and gas. We are absolutely seeing it. I mean, these service providers um, are 
pushing through a lot of price increases, a lot of labor increases. So, you know, I would say that in the oil and gas world, 60, you know, 70 is the new 60. Okay. Yeah. You know, so your profits aren't what they used to be because of the increase in services. And there's just not as many people providing them either. Um, so from my perspective, you know, getting the oil and gas company skinnier and, fo- and, and having a dedicated focus on how we reduce costs gets us back to, you know, a robust cash flow from that. And that'll be key. So Brian, where, where would you wind up? What, what would be your baby? I'm, I'm assuming it would be the hydrogen plant. Yeah. So, I mean, if we, you know, look, I mean, our investors are near and dear to me because most of them have been with us since the beginning. Um, and so, you know, in, in the perfect scenario, I'll continue on as the CEO of the hydrogen company and we will, um, find uh, an amazing CEO to take the oil and gas company, and I'll just stay on in the board um, position with them. Um, but we've got to find the right person, right? So I'm not just going to you know, walk away from it. I want to make sure that it has all the ingredients to be successful. Um, and so we will absolutely look for that should the time come where we need to do that. Okay. The, um, the spin out, it w- would you be spinning out to a senior exchange or would you be staying at, with the OTC? Um, I guess that's TBD, Tim, until we see what makes the most sense. You know, the, the, the senior exchanges have not had, um, not been, not been big fans of tech. So being a senior exchange, I'd like to be a place where I can show, you know, quarter over quarter revenue growth, visibility to a cash flowing business. Um, you know, and I think it'll take a handful of customers for us to sort of show that to them. Um, but I don't think we're too far off. We just got to sort of put in those units, get them running, make sure they have plenty of hydrogen, and then continue to build out from a viral sale perspective on those opportunities. Okay. Because remember, every customer we have isn't about one unit, right? So I think about our first university installation that will be, you know, hopefully by in Q4 of this year. You know, our starting point is 3,000 kilograms of steam. There are 100,000 kilograms a day. So I have 3% of their business. I'm not saying I'll get 100, but it's not crazy to think I can get 25% of it. right? So now all of a sudden I got the chance to grow 10x from where I am today with that one customer. And that's illustrative of how we think the market will evolve where you'll have customers who dip their toe in the water, right? comfortable because they have two superior boilers. They're willing to try the new product. And lo and behold, the new product works better. It's more efficient and it's cleaner than anything else they've had. So now we get a chance to put number two in, number three in, and then now they're ordering them for other plants, right? And so, you know, it just takes time for that to happen. Um, And I think it'll be, you know, it's been slower than we would have liked it to been, but that's not necessarily from a customer perspective. It's really been from a regulatory perspective, um, things that you don't necessarily see at the very local level. But I think it's coming. I think you're seeing the the, the capitulation from a customer perspective. You're seeing more and more governance. Um, And so my hope is, is that, you know, we continue to focus on customers where the viral sale is very visible. And the government's been making moves to to make it more um, attractive for hydrogen too, right? They've been awesome. The hydrogen hubs, slow to get out there, but hydrogen hubs are going to be a big deal. Um, There's been a ton of grants out there. They have a new series of grants. Um, The credit is great. You know, we focus on getting people green hydrogen. So, you know, assuming the credit goes through the way they've structured it, $3 per kilogram for every green um, green green kilogram of hydrogen or green hydrogen molecule, amazing opportunity, right? Now you're getting into a level where you can be cost competitive, right? So you're sitting there looking at a hydrogen molecule that's not cost competitive. In the United States with $2 natural gas, there's nothing that's cost competitive with that cheap fuel. But if the government can give me $3 and Colorado gives me an extra dollar, um, Michigan's going to give me an extra, or Illinois is going to give me an extra dollar. Maybe Michigan gives me an extra dollar. California is going to give me an additional incentive. All of a sudden, everybody's pushing, you know, and, and now you are getting to a level playing field where people don't have to make a bad economic decision for a good environmental decision, that they're making an even economic decision for a better environmental decision. And so, you know, it's funny, man. I, I don't know if I told you this. I, I, I shut down my 
membership portion of, of Alpha Wolf. And, and you know, it's funny. Uh, on my journey as an investor, I started out, it was all about me. I, I, I wanted to make money. That's why I started investing, right? And then as I got further along the way, I was like, I want to, I want to help retail investors become better investors. Right. And I think what I've realized now as I gotten older, how do I have the biggest impact on the most lives in a positive way? Right. And it isn't trying to help some retail investors become better investors. It's helping the companies that are going to make the difference in the world become big companies. That's ultimately, I've realized that if, if I'm going to do anything, I know I came into this world with nothing, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to leave with nothing. No matter what I accumulate from now until the day I die, I'm not taking it with me, right? So if I know that, so what, do you, what does it really mean? What it really means is what matters is what you do while you're here, Right. I mean, that's what matters. And if I can help Jericho become, and, and what will the new new company's name be? Do you know? Do you have that figured out already? We're not that far yet, Tim. We, we, we need to figure out what the path is first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we know that there's a path. We just need to make sure we have the right one for us. Whatever the hydrogen company name is becomes a billion dollar corporation. How many, how many jobs are created? How many investors do extremely well? How many lives, I mean, just have better quality of life because you are you have a better, you know, no pollutants going into the air. I know you can't say you're 100% pollutant free, but you're like 99 point something. <laughs> very true, very true. Yeah, right? Very true. Yeah, yeah, no, no, very true, very true. I agree with you. So that that's a huge thing mm -hmm. to me. It all comes down to, you know, they have this thing called impact investing, which mm -hmm. is actually very narrow the way I've read it about it. It's a very narrow uh, definition of the impact investing. I, I actually see far beyond that, right? There are companies that that have technologies that, that literally save lives or mm -hmm. uh, just make us safer, more efficient. There's so many things out there, so many small companies that nobody knows about that are doing amazing things. And unfortunately, Wall Street is broken. Uh, it, Wall Street's too big. The funds are too big now to, to focus on the little guy, right? Because they'd have to buy you entirely. I mean, they're yeah, a right. no. $50 billion fund, right? How are they going to buy 3% of a $50 billion fund in you? It's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it really is on the retail investors to help these small companies get to scale. Right. Yep. And that's the impact that you can have as an investor. And you can do more than just invest. You can help the company in any way possible by sharing their story, right, with other people. And if you have connections that maybe could help them with a certain portion of what they're trying to accomplish, there's a lot of things you can do as an investor, as a part owner of the company, right? That's what you are when you own shares. And that's where. You can have an impact beyond just holding shares, right? Correct. So I think it's such a, a huge thing for people to understand. The beautiful thing about public companies, maybe you're not an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, Maybe you're not the kind of person that you know comes up with these crazy ideas and, and then it goes for it. But what the public arena allows you to do is find those guys and those companies that do have these big grandiose plans to make the world a better place and you can help them by investing in them, right? But that's why you gotta get to know them. And I've gotten to know Brian extremely well. You impressed me from the very first day I met you, right? Thanks. Straight up, transparent guy and in a rough, <laughs> in a rough spot because you were in a, a business and an industry that you know everybody hated essentially. And you've turned that whole thing around. I mean, I can see the enthusiasm in, in you're excited, right? Oh, very much so. Yeah, yeah. I love what we're doing. I think we have two phenomenal businesses and I think this is going to be an amazing opportunity for both. I think it's really overdue and I think we, we just need to execute on it now. You're going to change the world, Brian. 
You know that, right? You'll make the world a better place. Our investors money. I'd like to make the world a better place, Tim. But right now, I'm just focused on making sure our investors are all happy and make good money on Jericho. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Look, is, do you feel as though we've, we've missed anything here? No, I think that, you know, for us, it's going to be an exciting spring, summer, um, and we are going to work damn hard to make sure that, you know, we find the right solution and we find a path that makes sense for both of our businesses because we think they both have value that hasn't been um, unlocked yet. Right. You've got two, two very compelling stories that are kind of conflicting with one another and now not allowing people to really take a deep dive and say, look, this is, this is a really good business here. And um, I think it's offering an opportunity. You know, I don't tell anybody what to buy or sell. I can just tell you that if you look at this, this, what, what are, what are we trading at right now? What's the stock trading at? What's, what's the, do you know? I didn't look today. I did not look today. Um, it was twenty Canadian cents, I think, when I yeah. when I looked last. <laughs> I look at that and say, how many shares outstanding do you, do you have fully diluted? Do you know? Uh, two hundred and sixty something million. Okay, which sounds sounds like a lot, but if you look at the two companies and wow. the potential of both, uh, this thing is undervalued in my view, way undervalued. Right. Mm-hmm. And what's your risk reward? The, your risk is what? 17 cents US or 16 mm-hmm. cents US. Mm-hmm. And your potential for reward, <laughs> I think, is far greater. I mean, the whole small and micro cap space has been getting pounded for 36 months. That's just that's the reality of it. I don't care what business you're in. You're just getting pounded. And. And that can't last forever. The pendulum swings too far to one side. It will come back unless it's the end of the world. And I don't think that's the case. So this is an opportunity to take a hard look at Jericho, take a hard look at their hydrogen and the progress that they've made. I mean, it's, it's, it's huge steps compared to when Brian and I first started talking. This is when it's starting to get exciting. Would you agree? Absolutely. I, yeah. I mean, look, from, from the top down, and we're pretty excited to, to execute on what we think is a great path. Um, you know, from myself and Ryan and Ben and Dean and Janet and the whole team, we think this is going to be, um, you know, a big shift for us and a big opportunity to show the value of the two portfolios. And it's good for the environment. It's, it has an impact for the environment. on the environment long term so brian uh, i thank you for coming in j-r-o-o-f is the symbol jericho energy ventures it's on the otc you know how this spin out works you you did mention earlier if you have shares of jericho you're going to get shares of whatever the other hydrogen company is right yeah that's that's correct yeah Uh uh-huh exactly okay Brian, thank you for coming in. Chance to buy two for one now. Huh? Chance to buy both of them right now and end up, you know, hopefully at a discount to where they are separately. (laughs) All right. Perfect. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to turn this off. And we'll have you back. When there's a decision made, right, for sure, we'll... we'll Uh, Yeah. Well, we will be back as soon as we have a, a, a definitive path and a strategy that we can announce, you will hear from us. Okay, perfect. Hold on one second. Thank you for listening in to today's CEO interview with Brian Williamson from Jericho Energy Ventures, ticker symbol J-R-O-O-F. I hope you enjoyed today's interview, and if you did, do us a favor, give us a like. How about giving us a share? And while you're at it, make sure you smash that subscribe button. All of those things are very important to us here at Alpha Wolf Trading. And we appreciate you taking the time to do that. Until next time, stay safe. Alpha Wolf Trading wishes you the very best of success.